and one year from now, we'll pull it out again. Now, if you haven't grown in your understanding of who God is, if that somehow has not been fulfilled, I'm not doing my job, and I want to hear about it. I know this is true. By making a deeper commitment, a step of faith, we discover new life in Christ. In many ways, we're just like Frodo Baggins. We're on the edge of what is familiar, ready to take this next step into something that is unknown. Do we have that deeper desire that was with us as we took that first step to want to experience something more? Are we willing to take that conscious step and see what happens as we offer ourselves to this life to make a deeper commitment to God? I want to share a couple examples of how that works. In my former parish, we had a shelter program. We housed uh, three to five homeless families for a week at a time, and it was on a rotational basis, so it was for about five weeks of the year, and volunteers ran the entire program. So we would have an evening meal shift, and people would cook dinner, and we would have those that would come and entertain kids and do some constructive tutoring for kids that had homework, and we'd have those that would spend the night with our families. And one volunteer named Sunishi was the mother of two young children, and she was as busy as any mother is with two young children. And she was volunteering one night for our children's ministry shift. And I think when she came up to me after that week somewhat sheepishly, and she said, you know, Channing, I need to tell you that when I showed up for my shift, I was filled with resentment. I did not want to be here. I had a million reasons why I needed to be here, and I had a million things to do. I had to move mountains in order to be here. But after I spent some time with those children in our program, it absolutely put my life into perspective. And i got to tell you, it changed my life. Now, if Sue didn't have that commitment to show up and to volunteer to help out these children, would she have received that joy and peace that sustained her for the weeks to come? When I was called as your rector, I made a commitment in my own life that I would take time out every morning to say morning prayer. It was important for me to wake up and uh, not to wake up with worry or concern or anxiety, or if I did, to shift that. And remember that this is God's world that we all live in. And to find some piece of scripture in the morning lessons that would just inspire my heart a bit. I need to tell you that by doing that every day, it has changed my life. It's changed my vocation. It's changed my marriage. It's changed all of my relationships. Because I was willing to make that commitment new life was found. It was a new life experience. So I want to encourage you to attend the ministry fair today. Follow where God leads you. Listen to the stories of the lay leaders. See where God may be calling you this year to give an hour to or to join a full ministry. What happens as you commit your hearts and your hands in a deeper way, more intentional way to the ministries of St. Andrews? And I hope you'll take some time this week to write that letter to yourself. What do you want to, from your relationship with God a year from now? What do you want that to look with, to look like? Connect to that inner desire. Now some of you have asked me, what am I feeling right now on this side of the celebration of new ministry? And I need to share with you, this is the last time I'll have to before we enter into that together, that I'm filled with absolute gratitude. This has been a tremendous blessing in my life, and I look forward to living out all of my ministry here and with you. It is a tremendous privilege to be your rector. Some of you have said, what are you hoping for at St. Andrews? And I'd like to answer that with a story. Three years ago, there was a Avon breast cancer walk over three days. Participants walked from San Jose to San Francisco, spending 20 miles each day, walking 20 miles each day. And it passed right through San Mateo, where my former parish was. On this particular Saturday, I was stopped at a traffic light, and here came groups of 10, 20, 40 women, some men, dressed in pink, 
walking, and cars started to honk and support, and my eyes welled up with tears. It was great to see hearts in action. People willing to engage their hearts to make a difference. So what am I looking forward to at St. Andrews? Seeing groups of 10, 20, 40 people gathered in fellowship ministry, doing outreach, singing in our choir, volunteering at the Echo Shop, doing children's ministry, putting our hearts into action in order to make a difference in God's world. So, may God richly bless us with his spirit and with new life in each of us as we offer, offer our hearts and our hands together in order to make a difference in God's world. Amen.